Good morning. It's Nate's Live Talk. Thank you to everyone that's like, shared, and subscribed. March 29th. Another rainy day here on the East Coast. Still getting pounded with rain for months. Um, feel good this morning. Uh, got a lot of good feedback, a lot of support. People reached out, creators, artists reached out. Let me know I'm making a good move and to enjoy this journey. And, you know, I feel good. I feel really good, which uh, I wasn't feeling too good for a while. But uh, so I wake up this morning and uh, I got a text from my former employer, the supervisors there, the managers. Oh, bring your stuff in, this, that, so you can resign. Bring all your uniforms, bring that. It's raining. We got like inches and inches of rain. I didn't like making the 40 mile drive each way, every day. I resigned from my position. You think I'm gonna run right down to that island and give you your stuff? You like stuff, some of it I paid for, my uniforms and stuff, and get out of here. You're crazy. I'll see you when I see you. You know, and that feels so good to say because people treated me like garbage. They really did. Not all of them, but, you know, a lot of them, they don't care about you, man. Like I said, they don't care. These bosses don't care. And uh, I'm going to talk about some stuff today to do with money um, and, you know, middle class, lower class, low, low income, you know. Uh, this is something, I don't know if it's older people, I don't know what it is. I dealt with a lot with my parents. Me and my parents haven't really talked a lot lately. You know, we really butt heads and, you know, it's just, uh, people are really out of touch with what's going on, you know, and I'm not making excuses. I worked my ass off my whole life, man. You can ask around. People will tell you, that guy worked. I fish for a living. Uh, like, even when I was partying, I, you know, I had a drug addiction and stuff and, uh, you know, I'm going through some real stuff, man. I, you know, and I've had a, had health problems since I was a kid, and you know, lost a lot of people in my life, loved ones, and unexpected deaths and stuff, and friends. But I, I always worked. I always like, you know, I tried to make a living, and you know, I wasn't never really, well, I like, I never was rich, but I wasn't broke. Like, I always kept some money in my pocket, you know. You know, really, like, it irks me when people like. They act like, it's like people 40 and under get treated like we're lazy, we don't know what we're doing, we're just making excuses for things. And I got some numbers here I'm going to show you. And you know, the numbers don't lie. Men, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, right? So here's some numbers. You can look them up. You can leave comments. You can argue all you want. These are the facts. There's facts and then there's what you tell yourself to make yourself feel good and belittle people basically. So in 1983, making $30,000, that was the year I was born, was equal to 164,000 in 2024. In 1950, average household income was around $3,000. That's crazy. Before taxes, I was making $3,000. And uh, in 1950, the average house was $5,000. So I could have bought 12 houses making what I make now back in 1950. Now in 2024, 74,000 is the average household income. How much do you think the average house costs? Average house, 2024, 450,000. Are you crazy? And they're not, we're not talking some big beautiful house. We're talking a ranch on a shitty street, you know, with with shitty roads and bridges falling down and come on what would middle be middle class be today numbers 174,000 is middle class I never made 174,000 in a year in my life I don't know too many people that have and that's not doing well that's just getting by 174,000 you're just getting by just to get by so you're going to sell your soul, you're going to go work that job and let that, that boomer that's been at that job for 45 years, 40 years, 30 years, leaves at 3 o'clock every day, never gets stuck in traffic, 
don't gotta go out in shitty weather. You're gonna let him shit on you day after day after day for 30 years. I'm not. You shouldn't. That's mental illness more than anything to me. You're gonna let someone treat you. If, if you, I, I know people, most people will punch someone in the face. Most people I know. And because it's a job, it's okay. If someone told you they were going to treat you like that and get over on you like that, you'd be ready to fight. You might even kill them. And I'm not making threats. I'm not making threats. I do not want to hurt anyone at all. You know, I don't. Let's not, let's not even try to put it that way. But what I'm saying is, is it's not a lack of hard work or work ethic or the numbers are there. 174000 to barely be middle class. $450,000 for a home. I was working almost 70, 70 hours, well, not 55, 60. Sometimes you get over 60. Spending 13 hours in traffic. Both bridges to and from to my place of employment whatever way I decided to go, whether I wanted to go through Providence or go down towards Narragansett and hop on 138, both bridges, either way, are under construction. You got a toll, you got gas, you know, how are you going to get by making $60,000 a year, $70,000 a year? You know, and my partner works and she does all right. She's got to go over that other mess. They are the Washington Bridge. That thing's pathetic. I mean, and then they're saying two years. We know this. Is, we know that ain't going to be two years. Now they push all the traffic to the other side of the road. And now that, yeah, that side of the bridge is going to be really tip-top magoo in the words of Joey Diaz <laughs> that other side of the bridge is going to be in great shape in four, four years, five years because that's how long it's going to take if it even gets done right and you're going to do that to barely get by you're going to be crazy you're going to be crazy man she cut, she cut her hours back too. It's time to dial it back, man, and, and focus. That's why I'm trying to push, like, one of my messages for this channel is to push people finding their own way, you know? Because you don't get no tax breaks working for nobody. I made 60 something thousand dollars this year. I got $700 back, 500 from the state, 200 from the feds. They took almost $10,000 off me. Then I got the union. They're grabbing money off me. You know, like almost, I want to say close to $1,000 for the year right there. You can't write, oh, no write off for that. Because I'm employed by them and didn't, you know, as an employee, can't write off all that gas and wear and tear. You know how many miles I was putting on my car going to Newport every day? That's crazy. It's crazy. I'm not getting ahead. But why would I keep investing in something that don't care about me? You know? We, the job I was in, we hadn't had a union contract for over a year. I hadn't gotten my uniform bonuses. I haven't gotten a cost of living adjustment. You know? They got a super, the, the supervisor, the head honcho over there, has this big speech around Christmas time. Oh, everyone just needs to relax and take their time and, you know, this and that. And take it easy. And then... Within like a week later, he's busting my balls for being two, three, four minutes late. You know, after getting kids ready in the morning and, you know, helping my partner get off. Like, you know, it's... And half these people don't have families. They're just so career-driven and, you know, they don't have what, to me, really matters in life. Like, they don't have it and that's fine. They can live life the way they want and I can live the way life the way I want. And I'm not making excuses 
for, you know, I know you shouldn't be tardy and this and that, but, you know, come on, we got, we got two, three bridges, two bridges in Rhode Island being worked on. Um, you got to deal with the toll plaza. The toll thing's always acted up. To get in touch with anyone over there, they got a monopoly on it. If you get someone on the phone, they don't work with you. Then you got to go to court. Now you're taking a day out of work to go to court to pray a judge is honest and you know, like believes you that you're really just a working, working guy, a girl, and you know the thing's screwed up, you know. And I've heard him talk about it on talk radio. You know, it's not, I'm not the only one that, you know, obviously that was going through it. But so I'm saying, leave the machine, man. Invest in yourself. Do something for yourself. You get all the write-offs that way, you know. You have far more time. You can set your work schedule. You know, if you got to work a little job at night, like I'm going to be doing for a while. You know, I'm not against having a job or working, man. I will work a whole for a long time long i love working man you know and uh you know i love being on my boat man it just the drugs got too much i was just i couldn't hold it together at that time you know i was in deep you know i missed fishing but even that got screwed up you know it's just everything has been mismanaged so poorly in the state of rhode island you know in a lot of states and you know the east coast man what the fuck you know, I, I, part of my language, but it's like, who, like, we got to get involved. We ship our kids off, like, and we work these jobs and we're just go, 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 you know, you're running. You don't, like, I don't know about you guys. I'm running. I'm running to get kids. Half the time I can't make it or she can't make it, you know, those kids grew up and, you know daycares just to like barely you know like it's not good for them you know you and, and you know weird stuff happens man you don't want these people you know i'm not accusing anyone i i've been lucky as with uh who we have watching our kids and we've got a rapport with them and stuff the daycare and they seem great you know but like it's not their job it's not just school's job it's not my it's it's our job to be there for our children you know, and it's not fair to the kids, man. They don't want to be stuck in them places. I mean, socializing is great. You know, I loved the Boys and Girls Club as a kid. I lived there, lived there, loved it. But it wasn't because my parents were home. Like, I enjoy going and playing ball with my friends and the crazy shit we get into. You know, we'll have stories about that, man. Oakland Beach Boys and Girls Club were crazy. That My neighborhood was crazy. I don't care what anyone says. Oakland Beach is crazy. You know, and I'm not talking about shooting, this, that, and that. You know, there's some rough shit and stuff, but, you know. We had such a good childhood, man, even though, like, we didn't have shit, but, you know, we, we ran around the beach, went fishing, go swimming, you know, we got our balls busted, everyone made fun of the kids from Oakland Beach and Cole Hoggins and this and that, fuck them, fuck them too, whatever, I never really let it get to me, you know, for a little bit I did, you know, you got them rich kids on pot, different parts of neighborhoods, or not, they're not even rich, you know, they're just better off than our, we were. You know, and, and rich isn't, oh, sorry, I'm going off on a rant a little bit, but rich isn't money, man. You know, and I got that shit twisted too. Like, being rich has nothing to do with money if you really, like, look like, there's different meanings. I guess you gotta find out what rich is to you, but to riches to me is, you know, being in my kids' lives and going to their games. My father, like, even though me and my parents butt heads, like, horribly and we're not talking right now like like my dad can work two jobs and coach a team and like go out on the boat and make a couple hundred bucks cash and you know work his other job at night a little bit and you know he, he worked his ass off you know he, he was a hard worker if there's anything uh, I got from him, it was definitely my work ethic. But, you know, like, if he ever invested that time into himself or business, Jesus Christ, you know, like, but we, 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 we were afraid to take chances because, like, 
you know, you got responsibilities and this and that, but like, don't let your responsibilities monetarily push your decision or like force you into some prison where you don't see people because you got to work or you got to be like, you got to have a job or this or that. Like, find a job that works for you. You know, like, make your life yours. It's your life. You know, and. got to make it work for you man that's what I'm trying to do make it work for me you know you heard the numbers They're like middle class what the fuck is middle class now no middle class I mean and the people that are making that money I mean god bless them if they get to see people they must have like college debt up to their fucking eyeballs you know they probably just stopped paying it off <sighs> I mean I don't know but like $174,000 is a large nut to crack to pay a mortgage for four hundred fifty thousand dollars for thirty years—that's another thing, another prison. You got guns to your head all over the place, you know. You got your job. I oh, gotta have a job. Gotta have a house. You got older people telling you lazy. Work more. There's more you could do. No more hours left, man. No more hours left. No more hours left. There's only so much. How how worn down can you you be? You know, that was part of my thing. You know, I'm getting so worn down. So I, I didn't see a soccer game for two years. It's bullshit. You know, and then you call out or, you know, this and that. It's your time, you know. They pull you in the office. I need you here. Oh, oh, when you're not here, I got to have two people do your job. This, that, and the other thing. It's like, well, why do I have, well, I'm doing two people's jobs and you're breaking my balls. You know, and then you got the other idiot that you know they got people that like cover you on your day off and he's just throwing shit here and there and like doing things not right you're coming to work the next day you got a ton of crap to clean up then you're getting your beans busted about cleaning up the crap it's like dude follow your own path guys and girls follow your own path tell your kids to follow your own path you know because I mean you're just gonna be you're gonna be working for, for barely Really, anything anyway, you know. And if, if your parent or someone else gives you shit, you tell them them numbers. I'm gonna read them again one more time. But they're they're staggering. It's staggering. 1983, 30 grand. I remember my parents told me they bought their first house. It was a two bedroom little cottage, you know, in Oakland Beach. I think they paid twenty nine thousand for it. You know, my dad worked at Electric Boat. Um, he cool hugged a little bit. Not even a little. I mean, I don't know how much he did at that point. I was n newly born. I know he stopped fishing to go weld submarines for security. Like I'm saying, you know. And he got caught in the trap. You know, he worked his fucking guy worked his ass off, worked his balls off. You know. But in 1983, he was probably making close to 30 grand. You know, I know my mom worked a little bit at night. Here and there, maybe not at that point, but you know, as I got older, she worked a little bit at night, and then she got a job at McDonald's, and you know, feminism stuff. We'll get into the whole thing of that. That'll be another video. But thirty thousand and eighty-three is equal to making one hundred sixty-four thousand dollars now. Even at my government job, working overtime for two years, pretty much non-stop overtime. I wouldn't have got over 135000 And I need 174000 to just get by. The math ain't math, man. Bet on yourself. Put your money and time into yourself. Or find a job you love and figure it out. Just do, do what you love, man. You know, and I'll have more on this. I'm sorry. It's a little ranty. It's a little all over the place, but... You know, we got to really start looking at things, you know. Another thing I said, you know, about the kids and stuff, and I'll, it'll be another video as well, is, you know, they got you so busy trying to get by and make a living. And, you know, there's a school meeting. There's something you don't agree about going on at the school. My 13-year-old middle school is a mess. My old high school, it's a mess, dude. The vice, print, the vice of the principal, one of them just got caught drunk driving for like the second time. Give him his job back, whatever. You know? 
and I'll, that'll be another video too but it's like they have all these meetings and all these things and you know the city and state and, and politicians they all meet all the meetings are never at a time when anyone can get to them so they just do like pass policy and make rules and do whatever the hell they want they got you they got you working so much that they could just do whatever the fuck they want you know so that, it's, it's like we got to take a stand man we got to start focusing on what truly matters what truly truly matters you know if you really care about your kids and your own life what's really going on you know got to take a stand um so that's it for this video you know those are the numbers you know your parents some older people bust your balls all oh, this generation don't work this that the other thing bullshit man i came out of the womb working seriously you can ask anyone i i grew up with but no man i, I lived on my father's boat even as a kid i was always hustling a buck since forever forever they weren't gonna give it to me man I mean, we didn't have it like that 174,000 middle class nowadays i don't know anyone that makes 174,000 dollars if you do hit me up man you're hiring you know what i gotta do to get it will i have a life probably not you know so build your life around your life and what matters and you know more to come check us out nate's live talk like comment share subscribe need your feedback you animals love you see you later in the day